Hey folks, bit of an update on what I'm printing lately. A couple of things I'm really happy with and uh, a couple of things still to tweak and improve, of course. Um, this is a two kilogram part that has been running for 15 hours and is almost done. Um, so from a throughput point of view, I'm extremely happy. This is a 1.4 millimeter nozzle and I'm running PETG, which is notoriously tacky and stringy. A um, couple of things about that. I've had to um, put a permanently joined brim of 25 millimeters or I think that's one inch in freedom units um, around the outside, which I'll cut off with a knife just to make sure the hold down is good. Uh, and that's working well. Threw down some glue stick as well. Um, but the 1.4 millimeter nozzle width and two walls uh, using PETG is spectacularly tough and durable for making um, display parts out there in public that people are handling. Um, played with my belts and tightened them up and very happy with, I would say, most of the 360 degrees of walls. PETG is heck and shiny, so you can see a bit of a moiré pattern there. Um, particularly on the x-axis as it gets around. One thing I've been playing with is uh, I'm not using smart seams at the moment in Orca Slicer, but I'm playing with uh, the overlap setting where it wipes back, and I've set that to about seven millimeters at the moment. But with PTG, I'm, to stop the stringing on large travels, I've set the retraction to, I think it was nearly 12 millimeters, which is huge. You can actually see um, on the overhead when it retracts that the whole thing slackens off and then I'm having to reprime about three millimeters back into the nozzle on restart um, that's leaving I think it's effectively sucking air back up into the Goliath which does have a, a really long heat chamber to because it can handle uh, so much heat capacity but what that means I think is that the material is actually coming out burnt and bubbling um, when it resumes each lap of the outer wall. So uh, getting rid of stringing with heat guns is pretty easy on a part like this. And most of the stringing will end up internally because I'm printing the internal wall before the outside wall. So I think I'm going to recalibrate for the next piece with um, uh, much lower retraction levels so that it's not popping and bubbling uh, on the start of the lap. But luckily with this, I can hide that seam in the back of the part anyway. Uh, that I've got the y-axis inverted on this setup so that I can actually see what the seam is doing while I'm printing it, even though it's set up in the slicer to be at the back of the plate. Um, and I've got some janky cardboard laid down, but I think that's helping with energy consumption. There's nothing worse than a one kilowatt heating bed and not much of it is covered. I think down the track, I might actually look at some uh, Maybe some of the silver insulation that you put on the inside of your car windscreen cut into sections and that can be laid as tiles around the outside. Obviously the cardboard doesn't look great, although cardboard still has a you know a, an ignition temperature when it's not stacked under uh, metres and metres of the stuff of about 230 Celsius, I think, from memory. So I'm not treating it as a safety risk, but, you know, it's, it's not very pretty and it's not so effective, but it's certainly better than nothing. We've just hit um, the start of autumn here in Australia and uh, it's getting down to about seven degrees Celsius overnight. So something's better than nothing for sure. The outer speed doesn't look very fast. I think that's running at 70 millimeters a second, but the volumetric capacity still pretty insane. I'm running at 65 cubic millimeters a second. Uh, so the fact that I can punch out the two kilogram part uh, effectively, what are we, 15 hours into it and very little to go, possibly another two hours, is um, really exciting for me as a production machine. I don't need then a high speed gantry and uh, the customer's quite happy with the Z layer lines, which sort of with the, the angle I'm standing on is, is a little bit accentuated and PETG is just so shiny. so. I uh, think, um, you know, if I transferred this into a matte PLA part, 
Uh, the layer height, which from memory is 0.8 millimeters, is still pretty good. Well, I've got a bit of variable layer height coming up on this top rounded lip. Um, anyway, sorry for the long and lengthy rant, but I thought people might be interested in uh, in where I'm up to. Oh, perhaps the other thing to add is that I have really uh, tightened up the uh, Y-axis belts just because I'm not running particularly fast and uh, the closed loop stepper motors are handing, handling that fine. They're still barely getting warm. I've had a couple of events where I pushed the acceleration for travel moves way too high and the closed loop stepper motors um, just lose where they're up to and they start uh, fighting each other and shooting off. Um, so I've turned the travel speed and acceleration down. I think travel's still at 70 and uh, the acceleration is a similar number. So it's taking about one second to get up to 70. Um, that has really helped and I haven't had any lost prints. The other place I'm finding that handy is um, this infill that I'm printing at the moment being a, a lightning infill. Um, because I'm priming the nozzle back and it's oozing a little bit and the acceleration's low, it's actually really helping with kind of blobbing um, the material underneath there. Um, you can probably see the over extrusion on, on this lip. There's another part that sits in on that lip. So I only put one top wall on that and it's quite over extruded quite deliberately and chunky for strength. But um, overall as a structural um, approach, kind of over extruding that lightning infill is working really well for me. We'll see how it ends up in a minute anyway. All right, that's about enough.